The other sort of major province of the seafloor are just the ocean basins. It's really the area between the continental margins and the oceanic ridges, really anything else thrown in, inside of there. And it doesn't really encompass islands, but um, they sometimes get swept up in our figures and our views of this. But any of these purple regions are the ocean basins, what we like to call the plains of the seafloor, sort of the Kansas of the seafloor, if you want to think about it that way. But it's really far from flat. And we have, of course, the Indian Ocean Basin. Again, this is all parts of the ocean basin that are not oceanic ridge or not continental margins. The Pacific Basin, and we also have the Southern Ocean Basin. We'll throw in that one here. And the Atlantic Basin in this figure as well. And remember, the Atlantic Basin being these purple areas. And if we add up all these purple areas, oh, we'll also include the Arctic Basin. If we add up all the surface area of the ocean basins, they actually make up about 60% of the entire surface area of our planet. So the ocean basins, or the abyssal plains as they're also known, are the most common feature or most uh, abundant feature on the surface of our planet. Well, if we just take a slice, we've been looking down at the ocean from outer space in some sense. What happens if we take a slice across the ocean. What does that look, at, look like? Here we have figure 4-5 from the book and this is a slice from uh, South America to the coast of Africa. Here we see on this side right up against the Andes a trench, an oceanic trench, and we covered part of that in our lecture last week. We have the Andes Mountains, we have the continent of South America, and then we have this sort of lip of eastern South America, say around Brazil, that's covered in water. This is called the continental shelf. It's still continental crust, but it's just that submerged portion of the edge of the continent or the continental margin. But this is the shelf portion. It drops off very rapidly in what we call the continental slope, a more gently sloping region that tends to see the accumulation of large amounts of sediments is a continental rise. And then out in the middle of the ocean basins, and again, you can see that this isn't as flat as uh, it might otherwise appear, though we must remember that there's quite a vertical exaggeration. We've really compressed the ocean. So if you were walking along here, it would seem flat and would seem flat forever. The abyssal plains, we have the top of the oceanic ridge, or the oceanic ridge itself, and here in the Atlantic, we have a rift valley. This is a feature that's common with slow spreading ridges, as we learned in chapter three. Another abyssal plain on the other side of the oceanic ridge, we have a seamount, just an underwater mountain, and again, now here we have the coast of Africa. <clears throat> and though it's not labeled, we could have labeled the continental rise, the continental slope, and the shelf as well. So this is what a cross section of the seafloor looks like. And if you were to walk from one end to the other, these are the kinds of things that you would encounter on your undersea walk across the ocean. And what an extraordinary walk it would be because no one's ever done that. And it's not likely that anybody's going to be able to do it soon, but what a challenge, huh? All right, let's take a look at the Pacific Ocean in a little bit more detail, the largest of the ocean basins, about twice as large as the other two, as we said earlier. This oceanic ridge system that extends from the Gulf of California, very near where we live, across the, uh, off the coast of Mexico, around the Galapagos Islands, down through the central portion of the South Pacific Ocean, and winding into, connecting into the Indian Ocean. This is an oceanic ridge system the East Pacific Rise. We also have the Hawaiian Island Emperor Seamount chain. This is the best example of an oceanic hotspot. As again, we talked about last week, the Pacific plate moving in this direction and some sort of feature here that continually upwells magma gave rise to the Hawaiian Islands, the Northwest Hawaiian Marine National Monument and the Emperor Seamount up here towards Japan. We also have oceanic trenches. And in fact, the Pacific Ocean has more oceanic trenches than any other 
um, ocean basin in the world ocean and you can see these are the deep trenches here's the Mariana Trench of, off the coast of the Philippines we have trenches in near around the New Guinea region and, and southern Pacific Ocean we have trenches off the west coast of uh, South America and also here we have them off the coast of Mexico and Central America as well. Let's take a closer look at the Atlantic and Indian Oceans. Same kinds of things. If we look at the mid-ocean ridge system in the mid-Atlantic, we also have the Indian Ocean ridge system. We also have some submarine trenches as well. One down here I haven't labeled. This is the Caribbean and Puerto Rico trench, the only oceanic trench that occurs in the Atlantic Basin. This is the submarine trench that gave rise to the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami. So we're starting to put together a picture of sort of common features of the world ocean basins, of the different basins, and starting to get some sense of, hopefully, the kinds of processes that create them and also some of the things that they do because these are very active regions uh, tectonically, um, very active regions in sort of the geological processes that form the ocean basins as well.